Hey folks, my name is Jason. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my channel is called Old Car Auto Guy. We're currently working on a 77 C10 that we're lowering the rear suspension. We're going to finish that up today, so stay tuned. So for those of you who have been following the Dale the Truck build, in our last episode we put the C-notch kit in the rear frame on Dale. As you can see, the frame has been cut out. We've got it bolted in, everything is tight. We just gotta put the bump stop on this side. Today, I took the leaf springs into work. I took three leafs out of the leaf pack and I put new bushings in both ends on both sides. So what we've gotta do right now is we've gotta get those leafs back into place, attach the suspension with the U-bolts provided with the Beltec kit, and then we can set her back down on the ground. So, pitter-patter, let's get at her. So the very first thing that we've got to do is get the front U-bolts. So the very first thing we've got to do is get the front leaf spring attached. Can't talk. So the very first thing that we have to do is we've got to get the front of the leaf spring bolted up in here and then get it swung up in the back. Hopefully we've got the axle up high enough, which I don't think we do. We'll have to jack that up a little bit more and then we can put the bolts in back there. That should level this out so that we can put the U-bolts in, but we don't know until we start doing it. So let's get to work. I took three leafs out of this leaf pack. It's still heavier than sim. We are going to have to jack that up. So one thing that we had to do was get the back tires and wheels on the frame to bring the frame down so that we could get the axle up close enough to get these things swung into place. So we've got all of our U-bolts in place, now we're just going to tighten these up and that way we can secure everything together. Now one thing you want to remember that I just forgot is that your center bolt for your springs is a hole and you got to make sure that that, uh, that, that bracket lines up or else it'll bind just like it uh, just did. So one thing to keep in mind is that your 15 16 socket is likely not going to be deep enough to tighten up these bolts unless you cut them off once you get about halfway up. Otherwise, you're going to be wrenching the last little bit. This is what I chose to do because I just want to get it done and I didn't want to have to be worrying about cutting those things off tonight. I can come back and do those another time. So I'm going to finish tightening these up. I'll go over to the other side get that done. And then all we've got left to do is shocks and wheels. Then we can lower it down. Okay, so everything is now buttoned up. We've got the Nitro Drop 2 shocks on that came with the kit. And one of the things that I found to be a little bit disturbing was in the instructions. Let me show you. The instructions tell you to put the U-bolts in place. And then they tell you to put the shocks on. Well, as you can see, there's absolutely no way to get the stock bolt for the bottom shock, the bottom of the shock in place unless you grind it down, which I did. Had they said, put your shocks on first, then your U-bolts, you probably wouldn't have had too much of an issue. Nevertheless, they did not provide new hardware for the shocks on the bottom, which should have been a shorter bolt, but they did provide a new shock mount at the top, which is great. I wish they just would have provided both. So having said all of that, 
I've got the U-bolts tight, the shocks are on, all the bolts, there's no missing parts. We're getting ready to put the tires on wheels back on and set this thing on the ground for the first time. So let's get that done and drop her down. Okay guys, let's set her on the ground. Well guys, there you have it. Stock ride height pretty much up front and she's squatting in the back really good. The frame is definitely, the frame is definitely a lot lower. You can see where that bumper is going to hit right below my knee. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so it is now Tuesday evening and I wanted to come out to the shop and explain to you a little bit of why I'm a little bit disappointed in the drop kit. Even though I sounded excited before, I just want to show you a couple things that we will have to address really soon. So as of right now, I've got the frame sitting on jack stands because I've got the front end jacked up, getting ready to work on it. But as you can see right here, the spring shackles are up above the frame. Now, keep in mind that the box sits on top of here on the ribs, and previously the ribs were hitting on this. I've got the bolt down in the second notch in hopes that I would gain a little bit less of a lift, if that makes sense. You see, when this is sitting on the ground under its own weight, it's approximately a nine inch. But Jason, I thought you said you only wanted a four six drop on this truck. Well, I do. So when I dropped it in the back with the flip kit, there was my six inches. This bracket right here that somebody else put on, I did not take into account. Silly me. There's another three inches right there. So when this is sitting under its own weight, it is low. The problem is when I get the four inches done up front, even if I cut a loop out of the coil spring up front to give me a five inch drop, that means I'll be five in the front and nine in the back. It'll sit like it's dragging its butt on the ground like a dog with, well, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so what we're gonna have to do is replace this with a stock spring shackle, which basically means you're only gonna be about two inches here maybe uh, when this gets mounted and then we should be back closer to where we want to be up uh, in the back. Up front, once we get everything done, we can set it on the ground and see what it looks like on level ground and go from there. So as you can see, I've got the front end all jacked up. I'm getting ready to pull the wheels off so we can start tearing into the suspension up here. I suspect this will be part three of this process of dropping the truck because I think I'm probably going to be uh, the better part of an afternoon and an evening to get this done. So this will be Saturday's project. So when this video goes up, it will be th for Thursday's upload. And then I'll have to work away at getting something for you on Saturday. It's a special upload. It won't be part three, but it will be a special upload. So that will give me some time to get this done and give you guys a break from Project Dale. Well guys, that is gonna do it for this episode. And when we come back on Tuesday of next week we'll have gotten the front end all finished up by the weekend and we'll have lots of video to show you on that. Tonight's episode of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show is going to have a very special guest Robbie from United by Trucks. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am to have Robbie be a part of the show. I know Grant is just as excited to have him there to talk about what he does on his channel and talk about trucks. We all love trucks. That's what his channel is all about. So if you haven't checked out Robbie yet, 
go over to United Buy Trucks and see what they have to offer. They've got a couple of good builds they're working on right now. And it's not, uh, this, this show is gonna be something you're not gonna wanna miss. Also guys, don't forget, Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts and swag is available. The first link in the description box down below. I hope that you can support my channel in just one more fashion than watching and commenting on these videos, as much as I appreciate that. Having said that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you really like the series on Dale the Truck, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and bell notification. That way you get notified every time I post a new video on this old truck. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you all. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.